Welcome everybody to Eye of the Serpent Tarot for another Pick a Card reading. So today we're going to explore the nature composition of your spirit team and kind of an energetic profile, if you will, plus the messages that they have for you right now. And the inspiration for this is really just based on a particular part of a private reading that I do. If someone comes to my Etsy store and purchases the Spirit Path reading, there's a number of sections and one of the sections of that reading is looking at trying to define the spirit team around the person and what they want to say. And there's a particular process that I use to do that, which is what I'm going to replicate here. And what that is, is that I use four different decks that have entities or energies that align with what could be in a spirit team. So in this case, I'm going to be using goddess slash divine feminine archetypes. I'm going to be using archangels. I'm going to be using spirit animals, and I'm going to be using saints and mystics for a more human historical version of it. And what I say in the private reading, and so I'm saying here now, is that this could be literal. If you see an archangel and you think, I've always felt connected to that archangel, take it as a confirmation. But beyond that, this is just representative of energies. So for instance, if you had a past loved one who you would think could be in your spirit team and they had the courage and the loyalty of a lion and a spirit animal of the lion comes up, then it's not probably talking about a spirit animal, it's probably talking about that, that particular past loved one. So it really look more to the energy of what they're saying rather than literally, unless you feel, yes, yes, that is a connection that I think is literal. So it could be a bit of a combination of both. So that's the idea. And of course, that's going to be even more the case when you're doing a collective reading. So, so take from it, interpret it in the way that works for you. So we're going to start with, here we have a choice of cards to, to go to which reading, which gives us a little bit of a first taste of what the energy of the spirit team is in terms of their messages to you, or maybe a bit of a theme. Um, it may be very, very major theme in what they say, depending upon what the tarot tells us for each of them or it may just be a bit of an entry point, so we'll see. So for pile number one, we have pink that talks about clairvoyance, foresight, and prophecy. For pile number two, we have cerulean, which talks about rela relaxation, sleep, and surrender. And for pile number three, we have emerald, which talks about fortune, luck, and luxury. So if any of those particular energies, colors, vibrations, or whatever draw to you, that may help you choose your pile. You can, of course, go to more than one. It may be that it's a composition across a couple of these readings that best best sort of feels and, and represents your spirit team and what they want to say to you. So when you know what reading or readings you want to go to, as always, I've got the timestamps in the description box below, and I'll see you there. Welcome, pile one, to your reading. So you came to the reading with pink, clairvoyance, foresight, and prophecy. I think this will mean one of two literal things. It could be that your spirit team want to talk to you about spiritual gifts you have, particularly potentially those in the realms of clairvoyance and prophecy. So a, a, a capacity whether, and clairvoyance or clairaudience or clairsentience, really any of the clairs and the sort of information that can come through to tell you something is happening. So it might be that your spirit team want you to understand you have that ability and to work with it, or they may be saying they're bringing you this, that this is becoming a way, and that would be very interesting with the fact we're talking about clairvoyance because that is clear seeing, and this is a very visual medium that we're using. You know, tarot and, and oracle cards are a very visual medium. So it could be a bit of either. It could also be about wanting to cheer you up, I feel. I think for some of you, it might be might be saying, you know, like you think about things like La Vie en Rose, you think of, you know, in the pink. This may be sort of trying to say things are about to get better with, with a butterfly there, a transformation and so forth. The, the palm of the hand there could su suggest you know, that the fortune is coming in for you. So it's it's like, I would feel like this is a turning towards a good, warm, happy energy and maybe towards love. I mean, we see green as a color around the throat chakra, but pink is also, it's sort of a bit interchangeable. Pink can also be a throat chakra, heart chakra. Um, the pink color can also be associated with the heart chakra. So it's interesting I said throat though, because blue butterfly could be in that regard. I think I said th throat anyway. Bear with me. Obviously, all that was meant to come out, whether, however I actually articulated it. So that's, I think, our entry point. So it'll be interesting to see. So as I say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now lay out the cards from the four different decks. So we get a sense about the composition of the spirit team. Then we're going to see what each of them have to say. Then we'll bring it together with some astrology and a final message. So this will probably be a fairly quick reading, but we are talking about four different um, representations, each of which I'm going to draw to, to um, entities. So... 
we'll just say this is the first of the, the three that I'm filming, so we'll see how long it takes. So firstly around goddess or divine feminine energy. So remember from the introduction, this could be a confirmation of something if you feel it's the case. Otherwise, it could be describing the energies of someone in your ancestry, past loved ones, or another spirit entity or energy that's around you. And it doesn't have to be divine feminine, actually, but or, you know, particularly if it's a past loved one, but it is a divine feminine type of energy, if that makes sense. So for you, we have Aphrodite, beauty, romance, self-love. Well, that fits in the pink. Like, I do think for some of you, it's it's very much going to want to talk about how you're coming into love, into self-appreciation, seeing what you could be, seeing all you could be, and that kind of thing, and that kind of self-love energy. And we also have... Sarasvati, so knowledge, learning, and writing. So it could be also about how you communicate that. I find it very interesting that they're, they're all in the very much that pink that pink sort of color palette. So I do think there's something about that. It might even be that if you're trying to connect with Aphrodite or Sarasvati about this, all the energies from your spirit team that they represent, that wearing pink, something pink, or having rose quartz around you or something like that would be helpful. So I'm not going to go into any more detail than that yet because we'll see what they want to say to you. But let's see what Archangel energy is around you. Adna Chiel. Now that's interesting. That's a leadership energy. And with Sarasvati, with the learning, there could be sort of stepping up with foresight, prophecy, and a general sort of leadership energy around. Or it could be that you have a, a spirit guide or an angelic energy around you, either literally Adna Chiel or or one like that that is is bringing leadership to you or showing you a leadership path you could follow. And Tahariel, yeah, oh, wow. Okay, they together, there's a very strong sort of sense of Indigenous sort of uh, being close to the land, being close to tribes, community, as I say, leadership. This is, this is being represented by a prophesied tribe that come into the earth at a time when we need to have harmony and inclusion and and get rid of division and so forth. So very timely for the moment. Like there's definitely, from the Archangel realm, there's definitely a, a sort of strong leadership social energy around this. And as I say, this could be past loved ones or whatever. It doesn't have to be Archangels, but that's very interesting. Then let's see what we get for you for animals. And we are going to get tarot for each of these to see what they're saying to you. But for the spirit animal energy, firstly... We have koala. Oh, that's interesting because that's 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 based on the the archangel here is represented by a uh, indigenous tribe, a First Nations tribe of Australia, and then we get Australia's koala. So that that's interesting. We will have a talk about the energy around that. But I do I feel like there's just something about tribe, community, and so forth for you in some way. And kangaroo. Well, I don't know whether all my fellow Aussies are coming through for this, but that's pretty interesting. In terms of the overall energies for these, you know, the koala is about finding stillness within, which you kind of need to get towards understanding your own sort of psychic ability. And then the kangaroo is standing up for others. And there's a lot of that there. So I, I feel already I'm seeing a kind of a thing around using a, a sense of, of self-actualization and knowledge and, and a combination of, of going within and knowing yourself very well, but wanting to support others to have some sort of leadership role. There's something like that that your spirit guides want to talk about. So let's see what either saint or mystics are being represented. So firstly, we have oh, St. Mary MacKillop. So this is education learning as well. For some of you, this might be being a leader through teaching others, writing, passing on information and so forth with a very inclusive type of energy around it that supports others but you do have to go within but there's definitely something about knowledge here the knowledge that you have and Mara Doren so she was a photographer and a filmmaker okay I would say before we sort of even look and we this is our next step is to look at what each want to say to you but I would say that there is a there is an overarching thing here. This is about understanding your future, your your destiny, really. That has to do with you combining your knowledge with your capacity to present information in a very beautiful way that is supportive of others and has a very beautiful, including and 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 supporting and community and and sort of like higher vibrational sort of energy. So that that's really gorgeous. Like the overall 
feeling of this is is amazing so what i will normally do and like normally in the private reading i do each one at a time with the tarot but i just wanted to lay it all out to get the feeling of it because in a private reading i'll have done a whole bunch of other stuff before we get to this so i wanted to get the feeling of it first so i think this is this group is it's meant to lead through writing education teaching an inclusive way to deal with others and i think there's a social f f framework about it but but that i think is a big picture thing and why this type of energy is around you and your spirit team so now we're just going to ask each of them for their messages for you right now so i'm going to get two cards for each each time we're just going to go one at a time so we're going to see firstly what aphrodite and sarasvati want to say to you at the moment Eight of Pentacles. Wow, there's again the sort of education, the learning and the teaching. Ace of Cups reversed. Oh, that's interesting. Five of Wands reversed. Page of Swords reversed. Okay. Your, your spirit team want you to understand how strong and powerful you can be with this. At the moment, you're either hesitant to go out and tell people what you've learned and the skills that you have. You're hesitant to do it in some way. You expect pushback. You expect probably fairly petty, but nevertheless, you expect some conflict. And you worry about how to present your views. Um, if you were, for instance, you know, wanting to sort of take a viewpoint out online, for instance, and you probably would have reasonable expectations that it's a little bit of a, a war field out there <laughs> on the internet in terms of saying what views are. So it's not, I think they're saying it's not that you're actually wrong for being a little bit concerned about that. But Sarah's body wants to say that, that don't, don't, don't hold back on talking because you do see things very clearly and ahead of other people. You will find that there is less pushback because of your knowledge. You have knowledge. You'll, you'll have the gravitas. People will listen to you. But whatever this is, it's very close. Whatever you've learned, whatever you want to share is very close to your heart. And I think you're protecting your heart. And this is where Aphrodite wants you to sort of, or that energy of Aphrodite, whatever energy that replicates in your spirit team, wants you to, to, embrace that love embrace the blessing of that and know that you have the knowledge and the skills to take it out so this is something quite precious it feels like as i say it could be feeling like this is what my life path is and i know i should do this but it's such a contested and difficult world you know is it safe even to do it and, and it's they're saying they understand that but it will be less contentious than you think because you are very skilled at whatever this is and because you have the knowledge to get past the the sort of lies and the distractions or whatever that tend to be when one is trying to communicate in a contested area. So let's see with Adna Chiel and Taharil. So as I say, a leadership sort of energy in the community and a kind of a broader, you know, raising the vibration and connecting people energy. It seems to be something about what you're meaning to do. So let's see what Adna Chiel and Taharil want to say to you. The tower reversed. Six of Wands reversed. Four of Cups. Five of Cups reversed. Okay. They're saying to you that they understand. They understand the other side of this for you. There's something about maybe the message you have, what you believe. Maybe you've tried to bring it out before and it wasn't recognized and it was blocked. Or you felt, and this could be anything. It could be at school. It could be in sort of university or college. It could be at a workplace. It could be in your family. That that it just wasn't seen or the core part of it wasn't seen and recognized. Like it was sort of there, it kind of got a little bit of the way, but it really didn't get known. They're saying that the time is to move past that. You just need to maybe understand that this is a big message that you have and it needs to be done incrementally. It may be that if you tried this one time before, you went in, not necessarily like a bull at a gate, but you went in hard. You went, this is the case, well, blah, 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 and people didn't want to hear it because you are ahead of the, the pack. That's the thing to understand about prophetic ability and so forth. You're ahead of other people. A lot of the time, they're just not ready to hear something. So they're saying take a little bit more of a measured approach. You are talking about stuff that could have a very big impact on those that you're talking to and those that you might be teaching or, or leading. But... If you want to be recognized, you've got to let them catch up because they're not going to even be able to recognize you. And there's something, there are people around you or energies around what you've done already with this that, that, are, that actually went further than you think. Like let go of the disappointment because what it really shows is there's a foundation. So whatever you're doing, they're saying you, you really do have the skills. This is just about tempering the speed of it and understanding your audience more than anything else and if you actually look at something where maybe you felt frustrated the reality is that that you can 
you can actually pick up bits with that. There is something still there. This cup is there. I feel like that's the cup sort of brought back upright for you to move forward. So then we have koala and kangaroo. So it makes sense. If they're saying there really is something there and you need to sort of just go a bit slower and incrementally, koala allows you to go within and remember what this is because I think there's something. There's something here where you've been frustrated and being heard, but you got further than you thought you did. And therefore, going within and understanding that and reconciling that is helpful because you really do want to support others. And that's where your heart is coming from. And this is where the spirit animals or similar energies in your spirit team want to support you they want to help you go within so that your efforts to support others are strong i can tell you kangaroos are really strong and they're really feisty people sort of think they look really cute but you wouldn't want to be in a in a battle with one so there's a lot of energy here for you you know there's a lot of strength in what you have to do once you go within and understand it so let's see what koala and kangaroo want to say to you Plus, I don't know what there is about Australia, but there's something about Australia with this. So maybe this is, if you if you wanted to sort of raise an issue, maybe Australia is a good market or there's something going on in Australia that's a good example of what, of what you're meant to do if you're not already based in Australia. So Koala has two of swords reversed. Yeah, go within because you don't really know everything that you want to know yet. Hermit reversed. Then you can come out. It's a process. When you don't have the information or you don't feel you have the information, you can find it more within than outside, but then you're meant to come out with what you find. Four of Wands reversed, even if it's not what the prevailing view is, it will still be the thing that has the solid foundation. So there's something here for the people. If you've come to the right reading, there's something where there's a prevailing view, there's a consensus reality, there's something like that, and it's not really right. And you can see ahead and you can see the issues. And you've been trying to deal with it, but you're sort of like a bit worried about the slings and arrows and doing it. But you will be able to create something very long-lasting and very much for the community and supporting of others and very mater materially stronger than what other people are looking at. But it's it, it's not like you go out to an instant audience that is there and absolutely agrees with everything you say. You're actually having to take this on and present the information and your knowledge. So then let's see what Mary McKillop, who was a patron saint of education, and Maya Duran, who is a saint, oh sorry, a mystic connected to the visual arts and film and the narrative. I think there's something here about that's the other piece of this. You have the knowledge and you do have the kind of beauty energy to what you do. What you're doing is beautiful and more higher vibration for want of a better word, than what other people are doing. But it is a contested area that they're talking about. So I think this is about how do you how do you uh, raise things in a way that people can see it in a narrative that they can go with. I think the other thing I'm getting is for some of you, you're dealing, you know, film is sort of illusory. Some of you may be dealing literally with where there's a lot of illusion and delusion. And this is how you bring knowledge and stability to a situation. So let's see what they want to say to you. So for Mary, Eight of Swords, Ace of Wands, there's a create, ah, okay. The learning that you have will only take you so far. It will take you a long way in giving you gravitas and what you're saying has a point. So it's like absolutely own what you believe. You're, you're more on the right track than other people on all of this. But it will only take you so far. Then you have to be creative. This is the narrative energy. So then Maya says, Ten of Wands reverse. Yeah, it's, make it simpler. There's something in what you did before that was maybe a bit too complex or a little bit too fast. Make it a bit simpler. Don't make it a burden to hear it. Make it enjoyable to hear. The Empress, then then you connect back to whatever this message is. Then you can actually have the abundance and the long-term outcomes. So I do feel like that in the pink, like you can actually bring yourself materially to a very, very high order level, I think, with this. You have the skills, you have the knowledge. This is about nuancing it, understanding, firstly, that you have to go a little bit slower with what you're doing because it's not necessarily an open audience. You've got to persuade people. You can use drama, narrative, creativity in some way to do that um, and to kind of simplify a message because your kind of your mind and, and your, your abilities go so much faster and so far ahead that to you it doesn't seem as complex, but it is complex to others. But this is why things like lyrics and movies and things like that are much stronger often at giving across a message than you know, some long PhD thesis. I mean, it's great that people go and do the education and we know that there's gravitas to it, but you've got that. Now the point is how you present your information. This is what this is about because you do see things coming and you do have a purpose. But it's not, it's not as simple as everybody's just going to instantly go, yes, you know, 
you've got the PhD, so we're just going to listen to you. There's something going on with this. So there's a couple of things I wanted to close out. As I said, I thought this would be a pretty quick reading just to kind of get the, the messages for right now. I'm going to get three star or stars to guide you. But again, in a particular deck that's like, it sort of personifies the star energy. So I thought, sort of thought that fits with the, the feeling about it. So you may also think that this is, this represents people in your spirit team or energies in your spirit team. And then we're just going to get a piece of advice from the Akashic Records deck I have just to bring it all together. So firstly, we have Gemini, versatility, self-expression, curiosity. And again, we've got the pink. Like this is like, and be quirky, be you. You can express things very well. But Gemini, Gemini is quick. So as I say, you're ahead of other people. But Gemini can be very clever too. It's simplifying things and making it like humor. I think for some of you, humor, comedy, that kind of thing may be a way to get the message across with Gemini. And then we have Uranus, revolution, rebellion, eccentricity, progress. <laughs> so you definitely want to change the world. But remember, that's pretty full on. Gemini can sort of help you raise it. If you had Uranus in Gemini, then you would have a genius of communication. So certainly, you know, if that's the case. Or, or if you find when Uranus is in Gemini, it may be a period of time that you can really move things faster. Everybody is on a faster speed. For the most part, you're faster than other people. And Leo, big-heartedness, fierceness, and boldness. Yeah, there is a lot of big-heartedness here for you. This may be a sign that's important to you, or it might be the dramatic. It's like the, the mental energy, the communication, the drama to create the change. But understanding what, what they want you to know is what you're on the right track, you've got the right information. Just slow it down a bit, make it simpler, bring it into a narrative, bring the hearts and minds along gradually, and you really can create the future that you want to create. So let's just see if there's any final advice from your team. It could be could be sort of something to watch out for, or it could be, you know, a kind of cheerleading energy, just to close out the reading. Take charge. You're taking a back seat in a relationship or situation, and it may end up costing you time, money, or opportunity. You need to step up and regain control once again. Yeah, so there's something that didn't work, or something you felt, or you sort of stepped back because you're worried about conflict, but you're more than able to deal with this. It's just understanding the dynamics. You are meant to be a leader. That's what this is saying. And a leader is many different things. So whatever that means to you. So I hope that that resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 2, to your reading. So you came to the reading with Cerulean. So that has a sort of very strong feeling of throat chakra communication and so forth. But the interesting thing is the, the energy that is associated with this coloring card is relaxation, sleep, and surrender. I feel like there could be an energy around this about the liminal space. It may be an indication from your spirit team that they want to meet with you or communicate with you in dreams, astral traveling, shamanic journeying, that kind of thing. Because I feel there's something about the kind of almost brain waves and, and vibrational energy of the cerulean color here that might have something to do with what they want to talk to you about. Um, Whatever it is, I feel like it's it's a very soft kind of communication. I feel like the, the messages, which makes me wonder if the messages are going to be fairly, not harsh. I don't think, I mean, I don't use very time, it won't be harsh, but maybe on difficult issues and they're trying to come in a very soft way. This is just a feeling about what it might be. Um, otherwise, I think it is an invitation. It's an invitation to you to connect in those sort of phases. I sort of feel like you've got the doors there that you go through sort of in sleep or in some other thing along those lines. So that kind of energy, communication in that kind of brainwave vibrational space, I think is part of what they want to talk to you about. So what we will do, as I said in the introduction, we're going to get a couple of cards firstly around divine feminine energy, then around archangels and around spirit animals, and then around saints and mystics. As I said in the introduction, if any of this you feel like, yes, that is a divine female energy I absolutely think is in my spirit team, take as a confirmation. But otherwise, it could be anything. It could be, you know, an archangel energy could represent some past loved one or something like that. So just go with it as laterally as possible. It's meant more to talk about the energies that are around you, not necessarily their full-on personification. But certainly, if any of them do resonate, Take it as a confirmation. So firstly, let's see what divine feminine archetype type energy is, is representative of some of your spirit team. 
Oh, Jolongal. Now, this is the rainbow goddess, rainbow serpent goddess from First Nations people here in Australia. So she is all about, as it says, life stages, coming of age, transition. So this could be about almost a rite of passage that occurs within, as I say, astral travel, a shamanic journey, something like that. Some of you might be at that sort of stage. Some of you, you might go in particular patterns of a number of years, you know, if you look at the patterns of your life. Um, but it's a big, it's a big shift and it's coming into maturity. So there could be some energy around that for you. It's an initiatory energy. So there could be a kind of sense of a spiritual initiation around you as well. And we have Aphrodite. That's interesting. That came up for one of the others. You're know, loving yourself. There is a kind energy to this. This is a little bit more challenging, and this is maybe then the kindness around it. I do, I do feel like there's something about this where there is a bit of a challenge, so that might be the rite of passage or the initiation. But Aphrodite is there to make sure that you feel good within yourself. It could also suggest, and we'll see what we get with the tarot, that there is love coming in for people who are looking for love because this is the sort of maturity and then there's a romance. So it could be talking about something like that. And if that's the case, you may dream about this person. You may connect with them in the 5D before you connect in the 3D. We're going to, we're going to go through each of the, each of the um, representations first and then we'll see with Tara what they have to say. So then let's see what archangels are connecting with you. Azrael, okay, so that is that is the god of death. This is not about you're going to die. Um, no, not god of death, the archangel of death. You're not going to die. That's not what that's about. But it is, again, about rites of passage. There's something here. Like either, either it is that, that the people who come to this, this is a time where you are going through an initiation, you're graduating, you're moving up the, a level or something within a spiritual order or something like that. Or there is a big transition coming. And you will you will have you will be connected with in that sort of space. So relax, just let it happen, just watch what happens, just learn from it. You'll be protected, um, and it, there's a kindness energy. Azrael is a very kind archangel. So again, there's a sense of something big that that there is a kind energy around you. And Salathiel, that one doesn't come up all that often. The interesting thing, though, about this is that he's like an intercessor. He is, you can pray, you can pray to your God, you can pray to your sort of whatever your spiritual belief structure is that way, but he also helps you get into a meditative state. So there's definitely something about this. I would definitely say that there is something, there is information that your spirit team want to bring you, and you will be exceptionally good at picking that up in a meditative state or some other thing like that. And this, this is a big life change that's coming in. So I think there's a very, very big invitation to go in with that and know that you are protected through the change that you go through with this. feels very shamanic, actually, if you've ever thought about doing shamanic work. And speaking of such, let's have a look at spirit animals and see what we get there. Black bear. He looks strong and also potentially very protective. And cheetah. Okay. This is really building to me to be a, a pile and a, and a spirit team that is talking to you about developing your astral travel, meditation, shamanic journey, whatever it is, your abilities, because they're profound. They want you to understand this. The black bear amongst, you know, on top of looking very strong and protective, it is also an invitation to introspection. And the cheetah is the invitation to focus. So I feel like it, there's something here. Something wants to come through. And a certain amount of it will come through with this. But I think there's a very strong message here that in the end, just use this as the first light on the hill for you. Then, then do it yourself because you are going to be very gifted at this. And if you're already gifted, then there is something. There's a big rite of passage, change, shift that, that your spirit team want to connect with you so that you focus and you get the best outcome for it. So let's see with Saints and Mystics, the sort of almost more human historical energy that's similar potentially, or literal in your spirit team. So firstly, we have St. Martin Caballero, spiritual pilgrimage. Yeah, this is a journey. Oh, I think yeah, I think for some of you, this is a very big call to do something like shamanic journey. Definitely with pilgrimage. Uh, he was known to to give his, his um, cloak to Jesus or Yeshua uh, on a particular pilgrimage. Uh, so there's a sense of sharing here as well. I think it might be going within and then sharing what you have seen and what you have learnt. 
So there's messages, and, and when you go through this initiation or you, you scale up on your sort of spiritual ability or whatever it is that it's talking about, that's interesting. And we get Isaac Newton, discovery. There's something to discover. Now, it could be literally that you go in and you discover something that is, you know, scientifically or magically or spiritually very new, given that uh, Isaac Newton, you know, did discover key scientific principles. Uh, it could also be kind of a sense of the inner alchemy as well, because he was an alchemist as well as a scientist. So this is this is a very spiritual group, but in a particular way. Like, it doesn't mean you don't have other abilities, but there's a particular focus at the moment of going within. There's a message. There's a, And it's almost as though somewhere within that you are going to be initiated. You are going to be taken through a rite of passage to a new level, which will allow you to focus and share what you have, some new insights. So that's interesting. So what we do in terms of getting information from each of these is for each we get two tarot cards. So we'll start with the divine feminine and go in the same order. And we'll just see what else they want to say to you. So Jalungal, King of Wands. King of Swords. Wow. Okay. For any of you, if you're looking for love, and this it doesn't matter what the gender is or your preference, there's a very strong sort of sense maybe of someone coming in, very, very strong connection of a kind of passion and an intellectual connection. Like this is, and it is moving, it is moving to a new level. But I think for others of you, this is your kind of creative and intellectual move to, to a kind of personal sovereignty sort of energy. This is what the right is about. It takes you into this mature, mature creativity, mature thinking. Aphrodite, two of cups reversed, maybe healing from some relationship issues that didn't work. Yeah, ten of cups. It's after, it's leaving. Actually, this really makes me think of, there's a Bible verse, and I'm not going to, not going to properly say it, I'm sure. But it's something like, when I was a child, I spake as a child. When I grew, I gave away childish things or something like that. This looks to me, it doesn't mean this is childish, but it looks to me that there were maybe even old family things or old relationships that were not, didn't help you with self-love and with, with understanding who you were and didn't even understand who you were. But this is like, you go within and you find who you are because there's something here. You are, you are a sovereign in this, this world. Too. So let's see what Azrael wants to say because it looks this is probably why it's difficult. There is letting go of old emotional patterns, old emotional beliefs about yourself to to go into that sovereignty energy. So Azrael wants to say, Eight of Swords. Yeah, your your beliefs have tied you up a bit. Ace of Wands. That's interesting. That came out in that order for another reading. So maybe some of you are coming to more than one. Just going to shuffle, just in case it was my bad riffling shuffling. That will have come out for a reason, though, but we'll just sort of say. And two of wands for Celestial, and seven of wands reversed. Okay. So there is there is this. I think it's it, it obviously, even though it did come out in another reading, there is a sense here with Azriel that it is only your own mental constraints that are holding you in. There is a new... I feel like this is almost like a magic wand. There is a magical level. This is like moving into magic for yourself in some way. That going into this space, getting that focus and that introspection, there is a kind of magic that frees you from the, the mental constraints. This is what this is. It will feel maybe, as I say, like leaving behind something emotionally, but it is to go towards something better. It will help you have a direction. But don't worry if it seems a bit frightening at first. With Seven of Wands reverse, you will be protected and supported. You don't have to know every step. You just go one, two. You're just starting the steps towards it. Courage will be probably for later when you know when you've worked out what you want to take out in the world. But this this realm is yours, so you're meant to sort of move towards it with confidence. So then, Black Bear and Cheetah. Black Bear wants to say to you, the world. Wow. Yeah, moving between the worlds. Knight of Pentacles, to find a cause, to find the thing that you can grow and build and the thing that you could dedicate yourself to. There is something of dedication about this. Again, initiation, right? It's a passage that tends to be about dedication to a community, to a system of belief, whatever it might be. The Cheetah, Queen of Cups reversed. Four of Cups, yeah. The focus is, part of the focus of this is to let go of some emotional patterns that were not true to you. It could be family patterns. It could be some spiritual following that you wasn't right for you it could have been a love relationship that wasn't right some of that is about that to understand that that's meant to complete to find what you are meant to build what what is your kingdom that kind of thing 
And you can only really do this in this space because I think in the 3D, whether you're still around some of the people and so there's too much influence or whether it's just it, it, your mind almost overheats with it, going in and relaxing and going into this sort of state takes you through the transition and takes you to what you're meant to do. So then the journey, the pilgrimage and the discovery, what do St. Martin Caballero and Isaac Newton want to say to you? Or people and energies in your spirit team that they represent in one form or another. Ten of Pen There's definitely something about leaving behind either old family attitudes or old systems in some way. Like whatever you are, this is a profound shift. It will happen first in the in the sort of 5D or in the, in the sort of astral travel liminal space, whatever you want to say, it will happen there. But this is profound. You don't, you don't go back to what you were before. You just don't. This is very profound. But this is why it's important to go within and find your mastery here. Eight of you have asked, you have outgrown something, outgrown a relationship, outgrown family constraints, outgrown what you were learning before because you've gone to a new level, whatever that is. So as I say, there's some shift that's coming that, that will happen first there. That's why it's important to go there and find your focus and understand it. But this is a profound change. You are, you are not going to be the same after this. So Queen of Swords reverse, do not be too hard on yourself. Queen of Wands, believe in the fact that this is to self-actualize. You may get some pushback from, this is why I'm saying I think that you may find in your material world that people from the old way of doing things, the old ideas are still around and they're trying to put their mark on things and they're trying to, to kind of dominate in some way. But the only way they can is if you let the mind take over. But if you if you take this sort of voyage of, of energy and passion and, and all of that kind of thing, whether it's into a great relationship or, as I say, into a, a sense of sovereignty around spiritual understanding, whatever it is, that's how you self-actualize. That's a self-actualization card. So this is your process. Some people will self-actualize in a very material 3D way. You will potentially have very good 3D outcomes out of this, but the 3D path is not the path. You need to do it first in this other state. That's what your spirit team want you to know. Okay, so let's also just get you three stars to guide you. And I'm using a deck that kind of personifies the stars because I like the idea of kind of personifying all of this because we're talking about the spirit team. So let's see what we get for you. Libra, diplomacy, balance, harmony, and compromise. I think this is, I think this is a before and after, but in a profoundly different way. I think right now, Libra, the need for compromise in the 3D world is holding you into old systems that you've outgrown. That's why you have to go into a world where the mind is not the main thing. Balance even isn't the th main thing. It's the experiential sort of side of things. After you've gone through that change, then you can use diplomacy and so forth to move forward with what you want to do. But it's like you've almost got to let it go to start with and reclaim it after the transition. We have urine. So oh, it's funny, and that came up in another reading in exactly this spot as well too. This is profound change and there's a bit of rebellion. Because the other thing I was thinking about this just as I was shuffling is that Libra, when you have Libra strongly in your chart, you can have a very strong sense of justice. I have it on my IC. so And I always say whatever sign is on your IC really, really governs you. So I will get so irritated <laughs> when I think something is unfair, when I think that people are not, are not kind of looking at both sides, when there isn't balance, when there isn't justice. It drives me mad. And it would be the sort of thing that would potentially make me personally go within to try and find an answer or want major change. So I think there's something like that with you as well. You know, this is coming about because you want to shift and change yourself and your environment, but you do it first to yourself by going through the process in the liminal space. And... Full moon, fertility, gratitude, abundance, divine feminine. So I think you know that takes you back to Jalungal. It takes you back to there are sort of particular times. It may say that when the when it's a full moon, you're particularly able to get into this state, or it might be that you start maybe a system of meditations that go with the moon cycles, with the idea that by the full moon you've actually got ready to birth the new you. So go by whatever that you feel that's saying to you. So to finish off, I just want to draw a card from the Akashic Records deck just to see any other advice I have. This could be cheerleading. It could be sort of something they tell you to watch out for. It could be anything. We just want to see what, what else your spirit team want to say just in closing. A new path. You've cleared karma. Yeah, cleared karma. You've, you've, you've outgrown something. 
And now your soul is leading you to new experiences, you know, with Isaac Newton. All the steps may not seem clear just yet. Continue moving forward and the path will begin to reveal itself. Plus, in this particular thing is an extra layer. Go into meditation states. You will find an enormous amount of guidance there from your spirit team. So I hope that that resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 3, to your reading. So you came to the reading with Emerald, and Emerald is about fortune and luck and... I always can't read this third one. Luxury. <laughs> I don't know why I'm not reading that. That's a very nice word to read. So there's certainly a sense here that your spirit team want to talk to you about bringing in the good life. I feel like that's a very Taurian sort of feeling, like the good life, you know, enjoying your life, knowing what that is, claiming and so forth, the sense of being able to go through the, the door towards that, all the sort of fortunate kind of concept, four-leaf clover, that sort of thing. So I do think they're talking about luck. But, you know, fortune can be on a broad level. It can also be understanding fortune. It could be showing that you have abilities to tell, you know, read fortunes, your own fortune and other people's fortune. So it'll be interesting to see what we get, both in terms of the composition of the spirit team energy and also what they want to say. The other thing I would say with Emerald, too, is because it's in the green spectrum, this could be connected to the heart in some way. It could be an open heart and a caring heart and a generous heart brings in good fortune, or it could be love is coming in. So we, we will see what we get. So what I'm going to do, as I said in the introduction, I'm using four different decks that you that show different types of spiritual entity representation. So the first is going to be around Divine Feminine. We'll do a couple there for Divine Feminine. Then we'll do Archangels, we'll do Spirit Animals, and we'll do Saints and Mystics as representations of sort of spiritual path people in history. If any of these, as I said, you feel, yes, I do have that Divine Feminine archetype, I've always felt that you know, is in my spirit team, take it as a confirmation, similarly with archangels or whatever. But as I said in the introduction, it could also be types of energies that are similar to a past loved one. So if you feel that, take that as a confirmation. So just work with whatever you think it is saying to you. So we're just going to put out the two for each of the types at first and talk a bit about that. Then we'll use tarot to see what they're saying to you. So firstly around divine feminine energy for you. Oh, we have Sheila and a gig. So this is the gateway. This might be why I was really drawn to the gate there. And this is, you know, it looks like a gate rather than just... It's interesting. It looks like a gate rather than just a doorway. Though when I look at it closer, it could be either. It's got cancer there. So there might be something about family. And Sheila and the gig is, is often about giving birth, that sort of thing. And it doesn't mean that all of you are suddenly going to go off and give birth or have a partner that gives birth if that's not something that's that's sort of in your realm at the moment. But there's certainly a sense of sort of moving through, um, bringing in the new and building a legacy, building something that is around fortune. Then we also have Artemis, intuition, focus, and so forth. Your focus being a lot of it. What do you really want? So maybe this is one of the things, maybe one of the energies that this is saying is that, because I was sort of looking at all the different ways you could have fortune. It, one of the first things maybe that the divine feminine here wants you to understand is you're about to have a situation where you can birth some very good fortune in your world. So what would you want it to be? Like, you know, Maybe it's, it can't be everything, you know, like is love the most important, is sort of like a career the most important. doesn't mean you can't do well in other things, but there might be a particular opportunity coming through that if you focus on it, you can really leverage the good fortune coming in because there's this new, this energy of the new. But with Artemis, I feel like it's like being very strategic, being very focused, knowing what it is that you want. So that's the energy around Divine Feminine. So what about around Archangels? Azrael, now that came up for one of the others. This is the Archangel of Death. Now, this doesn't mean death, but it's death and rebirth. Like there's something here about a transitional energy. In fact, all of the readings have had that to some degree. There's a transitional thing here, I think, which is, again, my focus on what is it you would want your new world, your fortunate world to look like? What sort of life would you want? I often say around, and I felt Taurian energy there. I often say around Taurus's house, which is the second house. It's the life that you want to build, you know, money, status, possessions, you know, like what it all feels like, the environment that you're in, in accordance with your values. So I think Artemis helps you sort of like focus this and use the fortunate energy well. Azrael will help you let go of the past so that Sheila and Agig can help the new be born. So the other archangel energy around you is Sandalphon. So it is something very earthly. Sandalphon, 
um, is the Archangel over Malkuth in the Kabbalah. So that is all about earth. It is about an earthly outcome. Um, this is about, in a sense, what sort of music and rhythm and fortune and all of those sort of things you would want to bring in. So there is a there is a sense here that you can play your own tune. But again, it's sort of like you need focus when you're when you're working out something like that. If you were literally like the archangel is represented there playing an instrument, you need to focus on the music and and the 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 the, the chords that you're using and the harmonies of it and all that kind of thing. So there's there's something here about precision, I think to allow something new, something to end and something new to come in that brings in fortune. Let's see what we get around spirit animals. This one sort of jumping out. Arabian onyx. Oryx. Oryx, not onyx. Oryx. So I'm going to have to look that one up. And this one wanted to jump out too. The kiwi bird. Okay. So in combination, these two, and I had to sort of look them both up because they're relatively new to me. It's interesting. There is there is an ordeal. This is cause, calling for resilience, you know, going through an ordeal. Now, going through the end of something and the birth of something new is a bit of an ordeal. So this, this energy is here to help you with that. It doesn't mean it's awful because it's going towards fortune, but it's like... Yeah, giving birth is not necessarily the most pleasant experience. So, and I'm not saying this is literally that, but you know, if you use it allegorically, so there's something here about that kind of energy. Uh, I'm hoping you're not hearing the the noise outside that sounds very heavy, but if you do, maybe it's kind of showing that there's something heavy around this. But the kiwi bird is about trusting yourself, knowing you can do it. Kiwi bird, very small, very focused. It's intuitive. It understands going within to know to know what your strength is and what you can do. So then let's also have a look at the Saints and Mystics. So the most close deck I have to human representation. Firstly, we have oh, St. Joan of Arc. Yeah, this is probably fairly big. <laughs> Bit of an ordeal. Very visionary. Need for focus. Very, very important. Birthing a new world. Um, but, you know, like still, you know, very, very powerful. You have very powerful energy, and that's why self-trust is important. And... Maya Duran, now that, she came up in one of the others. She is actually a mystic who was a filmmaker and a photographer. So there's something here about the narrative, how you focus the narrative, how you focus the message, and how you cut through visionary. They're both very strongly visionary people to understand what it is that you're bringing into the world and, and how to best use that energy, how to make it harmonize, and how to go within to find the strength to do that. So I think you're all meant to sort of end an old cycle and bring something else new in and it may be a little bit tricky to do but but as long as you focus and you know very clearly what it is that you're, you're you want rather than if that's the big thing i think know specifically what you're trying to bring in then the energies are there to support you so let's see we're going to get a couple of cards for each so let's see what sheila and gig and artemis want to say to you using tarot so Six of Cups, something about childhood, family, memories, Ten of Swords, something's ending. Could be separate. You could be moving out of home. Some of you just might be moving out of home for the first time, and this is you really working out what life means to you and how you create it. Um, if that doesn't apply, because it's obviously not going to apply to everybody, there is some ending of an old innocence to allow something else in, which I think connects over to Azrael. And then Artemis, yeah, justice, having it balanced, having your mind knowing what you're doing is balanced and fair. Yeah, yeah, mind and heart, wow. Justice and temperance together. Artemis, you know, I think is, is bringing a marriage of the mind and the science to something and also the alchemy and the magic to something. So there's a very strong energy here for you. This is why it's important to focus. It's also that you could be drawn in one way or the other. Some of you may feel very drawn to this needs to be very clear. It needs to be very intellectual it needs to be easily explained all that kind of thing and the other side might be going this needs to have spiritual heft it needs to be balanced it needs to bring the heart in so there's sort of something here in working out maybe it's the midpoint between the two that is is where you can really create what you want to create and let's see Azrael and Sandophon because we've got as I say the end of the old to to almost you know, use music to bring in the new. I'm, I'm feeling music very much around Sandalfon, probably because of the way he's portrayed in this particular deck. But anyway, Azrael, Four of Cups. Yeah, there's something that was no longer emotionally fulfilling. Though there's something in it. You're not completely leaving something behind. You're, you're changing it and refocusing it. 
Eight of Swords. Yeah, this has come up a lot in these readings. I think every reading's had this. The big thing is to break out of any old ways of thinking that were keeping you stuck. That's why this transition is occurring. We have the moon, so very psychic, very psychic connection. Um, and three of pentacles to find. There's a psychic connection to find collaborators to help you. So once you focus what you want, you'll be able to find people to help you work on this and bring it into being. The other thing I feel, actually, is the moon, when I put that down, I thought about the Archangel Gabriel. So the Archangel Gabriel watches over Hassad. So Malkuth, which is Sandalphon's place, is the you know the 10th Sephiroth. Hassad is the ninth. So it's basically, they're kind of adjacent. I feel like the prophetic, I bring you good news... Fortune energy of Gabriel is connecting with Sandalphon's capacity to manifest something. So I almost feel like Archangel Gabriel and Sandalphon are working together. If you have, if you feel the connection to those Archangels, I think they're working together with you for this to help bring this in. If you don't resonate to Archangels or that energy, then there may be two energies within your spirit team, one which is kind of prophetic and one which is very able to materially manifest and they're working together to help you break through the blocks and bring this in. But it will be, as the Arabian Oryx says, you know, a bit of a bit of a journey. You know, so you need to be resilient and you need to be able to go within with the Kiwi birds. So what are they saying to you? Nine of Swords. Yeah, you you don't need don't it's the first thing that the Oryx is saying is is, you know, hell on. <laughs> don't overstate this. Yes, you need resilience, but it's okay. Don't worry this person. You don't really need to worry about it. It will sort itself out, particularly with Azrael's help there. Um you just, yeah, you just need to go within. So the Oryx says that whenever you feel that, don't worry, don't fret, go within. The answer will be there. The keyword bird says you'll find new people. You'll find people who support what you do. You'll find your soul family, whatever it is. Five of cups, it helps you let go of where things have been disappointing in the past. So it's like it's not that bad. It's just, you know, that there's a bit of an ordeal. But if you go within, you'll find the, the emotional support that you need. And eventually that will manifest in the material world too. So what about Joan of Arc? Because she had a pretty big job on her hands. And then Maya Duran, which is how you bring sort of narrative and, and beauty and illusion and, and, and vision. Like, as I say, it's very visionary. It's very visionary energy around this. What does that actually mean? Six of Swords. That's meant to give you your direction. So pay attention to visions. Probably very clairvoyant. Um, or some of the other clear senses as well, but probably particularly clairvoyant. That's helped to give you direction and make you know you're going in the right direction intellectually. Three of Cups reverse, particularly if others don't understand or see what you're doing. Eight of Wands reverse, don't feel you have to rush anything. You don't. Um, nine of Cups, because your wish, there is a real chance to bring in your wish and fortune. Don't rush it. Don't feel like you know it can only happen if it happens quickly. Happens at its own timing. Again, I go back to this sort of sense of giving birth, and, and I'm saying it's not necessarily that. Though for some of you, it may be a sign that you're going to have a child if that's something that you want. But the process of giving birth, there's two things about it. One is you can't make it go any faster than it's going to go. But secondly, you can't stop it once it's begun. <laughs> so there, there's that kind of energy about this. But it's all towards bringing in something good. So let's see what stars can guide you. And I am using a deck that personifies the stars because I sort of thought that would be good when we're talking about, you know, your spirit team personifying the energies in various ways that was consistent. So we're just going to get three stars to guide you. So firstly, Leo, big heartedness, fierceness, boldness. Yeah, believe in what you're doing. Believe in yourself. Yeah, and a bit of a dramatic sort of like visionary, fiery energy around all of this will we'll help you focus, help you bring in what you want. We have Scorpio, magical sexuality, intensity, and secrecy. Okay, so yeah, very, very strong energy here. Very strong energy. And, you know, like that fits with Azrael and to some degree, I think also with Sheila Nagig. There's, there's a sort of intensity, um, very, if it is bringing in magical ability, it's significant. And, you know, you could have these signs strongly in your chart or when things aspect those signs, it may be a particular time that things move forward. And... Mercury, communication, swiftness, agility, travel. So, yeah, you're very smart, very quick. You are meant to break free of the sort of intellectual boundaries and move forward, but you don't have to hurry too much. So Mercury can be a bit of a trickster. So make sure you've worked out the focus and what you want to do. Don't spread yourself too thin, I think, is the message. Okay, to finish off, we're just going to get a card from the Akashic Records just to see any other advice your spirit team want to say to you right now. It could be another challenge to be aware of. It could be a 
cheerleading message. It could be anything. We just want to see what brings it all together for you. So take the high road. You're at an impasse with a relationship or situation. So this might be the thing. Something has to end, shift, and this might be what is kind and what is just might be part of the issue. It's now time to think bigger. Release desired outcomes and take the most positive course of action because fortune will work out. So for some of you, this is this is about career or love or something like that where, where there is a bit of an impasse and this is to break you through the impasse. Um, but I think it's also to show you a bit about your own magic and how you can take control and move things forward. So I hope that that resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings.